I'm Eric Naso for Newshooter.com, and I'm here at BVE Expo in London, 2018. And I'm at the Airy booth, and I'm with Michael Jonas. How are you doing today, Michael? I'm doing very well, thanks, you. You have a uh, beautiful piece of glass in front of me here. What do we got? Well, this is the 18mm um, lens of our new Signature Prime range, which is kind of the uh, new range of lenses that we launched together with the LXLF to form kind of our large frame camera system. Signature Primes are the first lenses that we kind of designed from the ground up for A, large format and B, digital sensors. Um, and therefore, kind of, there are some attributes to the lens that are new and uh, exciting. The signatures come with a new mount that we call the LPL mount, large PL mount. In order to do really good large format lenses in a ideal way, there's some things we would have to change. Um, first of all, kind of the existing PL mount came from the film days, right? Uh, we have the master primes here. Uh, which were created for actually doing film with film copy processes. The signatures are designed for digital images and then it has a couple of um, advantages to have a shorter uh, back flank focus distance and a larger opening, right? Because uh, the uh, signatures are telecentric, which means kind of all the rays in the back of the lens actually come in parallel. Um, which is uh, something that you actually want for high resolution sensors because otherwise you get like color fringing and maybe um, even uh, uh, vignetting at the edges because kind of the micro lenses on the sensor are kind of optimized for uh, like uh, orthogonal light. Um, so that's taken care of and in order to achieve that we had to use kind of a larger a large amount. It was a, a, a kind of a, a long discussed um, kind of topic for us uh, whether we would like keep the old PL mount and the or kind of go for a new LPL mount but we at the end we said well okay um, in order to do it right um, you actually would need a mount like that and who else would actually push that kind of mount mm -hmm. if we wouldn't do it. Um, now, would it be able to work with an adapter on other cameras that are, say, full frame? Well, yes, we offer kind of the LPL uh, spec uh, to kind of all the camera manufacturers. Kind of there is a, let's say, symbolic license fee attached to it, but it's not kind of an, that doesn't have any economical reasons, right? It's more like uh, in order to have a contract in place. The majority of the, of the market actually will offer the LPL at least as an option, right? Um, I think it, uh, it is very interesting for lens manufacturers to actually design lenses uh, because it has some beneficial consequences to the lens design if you have a bigger opening in the, in the back, right? So. Makes sense. Now it also has some, a few unique features as far as the front and back elements? Well, yes, kind of, uh, first of all, kind of the lenses are pretty much the same size as the uh, master anamorphics. They are a little bit longer than the Master Primes, but they are uh, a lot less heavy. Or that like surprised a, me because it looks it looks heavy, but yeah, it's yeah. not heavy at all in the no, hand. No. Like the aha effect is always if you kind of take the lens and give it to somebody, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, yeah. this actually weighs nothing." So it's not a two-hander. No, no, <laughs> it, it, and it, it's very easy to handle. It will actually work on gimbals very well because it's not as heavy, right? So. Um, uh, it is definitely something you will be able to use on a movie. Um, and um, yeah, well, this is mostly due to uh, better lenses and using magnesium as the material for the lenses. Um, and well, kind of the lens has some additional features to it, right? So like with the Master Morphics, you will be able to swap the front and the back lens elements. Like they want more flair, yeah, yeah, they want well, more characteristics. Yes. They, they, they can actually, we will offer a flare set, uh, but they can also actually go ahead and decode uh, the lenses and actually turn them into whatever they would want to like. So that adds a lot of versatility in order um, to define the look of the lens. The look of the lens is actually generally super sharp. But it has, in, in the very high end detail, it is kind of, it, it has uh, the right drop off point so that like skins and 
um, everything doesn't look like digitally sharp. It still has uh, a touch of smoothness to it. Kind of the bouquet of the lens is actually very soft and creamy, uh, which is something that people have missed from one of our lenses in the past. But that's there's a, a big change to that. I think they look amazing. If you look kind of if you watch the uh, demo reels, they're kind of just very cool, especially on the on the, on the large format. With T1.8, they are also super fast. So uh, some people say they are at the limit of what a focus puller can do, but um, uh, and that's probably true. But uh, <laughs> focus pullers are going to be really earning yeah, their money but, with but, these but, full, full, full the, format. But uh, on the other hand, actually, the T1.8 makes them super versatile because kind of there will be an LPL mount for the mini as well. Um, and you will actually just be using them on Super 35 as well. Actually, this is not just a large format lens. This lens actually works amazingly on Super 35 as well. So it's just a, a general really <laughs> high-end, super cool lens. And I, to be honest, I love the look. It's one of the well most exciting products we have done for a while, I think. It's, kind of, it's really amazing. Oh, and one feature I forgot is that there's a, a magnetic filter holder in the back um, of the lens so you can actually click in the little filter holder and put in some fusion, fusion or like uh, some people kind of Lines. like to put some cloth in it or whatever yeah. right yeah, so yeah. Or, or, or lines uh, for, for flares it just makes it a very cool versatile set and you can actually do it per lens right that's kind of the other thing that's uh, uh, really nice, you don't have to modify something in the camera that you will have to change all the time. You can actually define the look of the lens per lens and then kind of swap the lenses around and the look will be the same. So it's actually very cool. How much is uh, the price going to be set for this lens? And we also have probably more coming and how many in well, the yeah. set? Well, we start with a three set, I think, end of March, if I'm correct. Actually, the 18 is actually the, the fourth lens in June. I hope I'm correct. <laughs> um, and then uh, we will complete a set of 10 lenses during this year. And then there is, I think, four or five more coming next year, which are like the speciality lenses, I think. Um, On the wide and the long yeah, end. Yeah, the wide, the, the wide and the long. They won't, uh, like all the lenses this year, I think, will be T18. Uh, the ones next year will be a little slower, but kind of they are, I think, the. the the wide is a 12, which actually is roughly an 8 uh, in Super 35, so it's incredibly wide lens. So, um, and what is the retail price going to be? Uh, well, I think the lenses are anywhere between like Euro prices, right? Yeah. So uh, they are anyway, uh, anywhere between, I think, 18 and 24. I think it's a good investment because these will stay around for a very long time. I think these right. will be as popular as all the other lenses we've done. And um, I think they will be around for 20, 30 years easily. That's, um, yeah. yeah. Looking good. All right. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Thanks. Look as good. Have a good day.